A Mr. Oes Raja is a highly skilled migrant, a UK trained engineer who until recently trained Ministry of Defence Engineers at City College Plymouth. The college asked him to write the training programme himself and promote it every year he worked for them. Now, he applied under Tier 1, and he was refused independent leave to remain under Queen One, Creo, uh, Tier 1. He is now destitute and faces imminent, deport imminent deportation. He lost the right to work or rent somewhere to live, and subject to what the new policy change means, neither he nor his family are allowed to use the NHS. This means that his six-year-old son, Ayan, who has a hole in his heart, can no longer receive potentially life-saving treatment, nor can Mr. Raja afford to buy blood-thinning tablets for his wife, who has a pulmonary embolism which is at constant risk of travelling to her heart or brain, causing a heart attack or stroke. She, is, of course, she, of course, cannot visit her GP. Now, what was his crime leading to the, refu uh, the refusal of his application for independent leave to remain? Raja's accountant made a mistake in filing his 2012-2013 tax return. Raja had no knowledge of the error. He only found out in 2016 when applying for his ILR, that is indefinite leave to remain, and he immediately paid the £1,200 he owed. It's worth mentioning he'd paid about £60,000 tax over the previous eight years. The Inland Revenue accepted that his was an honest mistake and imposed no fine, charged no interest, which they do when, the, when they judge there has been dishonesty. The Home Office, however, said the discrepancy was evidence that Mr. Raja had deliberately provided false information, informed him he was a threat to national security, and triggered his discretionary powers under paragraph 3225 of the immigration rules. This is a section designed to deal with serious criminals and terrorists. It meant Mr. Raja cannot work in Britain or travel to any country other than his country of birth, as no other country will risk letting him in, now he has been labelled a threat to national security and deprived his family of access to the NHS. The family's position is desperate. When his son recently had chest pain, Mr Raja could not afford to visit the consultant and pay fees of £80 an hour or send him to hospital and pay £100 a day. He cannot pay for food, or rent. He has no connections or relatives anymore in Pakistan, and his children only speak English. He is now destitute. So far, he survived by liquidating his savings, selling his car, his wife's jewellery and wedding dress, and his precious engineering books, and by living on discarded food from Tesco that is passed by its, its sell-by date. He's had help from his friends. His former students were so upset by his plight, they sent him odd gifts of £10 and £20. I've seen the most moving letters from students who said he was an inspirational teacher and from his employer praising his work and his integrity. He and his family face a future of having to beg and sleep on the streets or deportation. Since I wrote a letter about Raja in The Guardian, I've had many emails which show his plight is not exceptional. I gather from an organisation, the Highly Skilled Migrants Group, that there are at least a thousand similar cases where people's lives have been ruined. The only error made by these highly skilled migrants like Raja, teachers, doctors, lawyers, engineers and professionals, on the government's list of occupations in, in which Britain is short of skills, people who've often lived here for a decade or more and have British-born children. Their error is an error that half a million British taxpayers make every year. 
Native taxpayers amend their tax returns without facing any penalty at all, nor even a fine. But the Home Office treats migrants who do as terrorists. This treatment, my lord, is a national scandal every bit as outrageous as the, sta as the treatment of the Windrush immigrants. A monstrous injustice is being perpetrated by our government in our name. If it's not remedied, the Home Office will not only be breaking every canon of a civilised society, it also ignores one of the basic tenets of the rule of law, the golden rule that someone is assumed innocent until proved guilty. How did this happen? The history is important because we must know how far the policy change means a break with the past. Originally, errors in tax returns were dealt with under paragraph 322, subparagraph sub 1 of the immigration rules, a draconian provision specially designed for tax offence with a penalty of refusal of IRR and deportation. But under that subpara, at least it was a Home Office which had to prove dishonesty. And because they had to prove dishonesty, they kept losing in the courts. So in their determination to increase the number of deportations and intensify the hostile climate for immigrants, the Home Office switched to using another rule, subparagraph 3225. This was not originally intended for tax errors, but for really serious crimes such as murder, terrorism, and for conduct that constitutes a threat to national security. This switch was a switch for an improper purpose. Furthermore, this is almost unbelievable, under that subparagraph, which deprives immigrants of the right to work, rent property or access to the NHS, I understand the burden of proof lies on the migrants to prove their innocence, not on the Home Office to prove guilt, and not just innocence, but also, uh, that, uh, also that the Home Office decision was perverse or irrational. And to top it all, they cannot get legal aid. What could be a greater betrayal of our traditional respect for justice and the rule of law? But the switch proved a success. Not surprisingly, by use of this subparagraph, the Home Office could boast that the number of deportation was dramatically increased. Well, the Secretary of State Howe has now announced a change in policy, and that gave us hope. And he said, that uh, applications to refuse ILR would be put on hold. But refusals of ILRs and deportations continue. Amelia Hill cited a further example in Tuesday's Guardian. Examples, not just one. The Home Office explained that in these cases they had already been scrutinised by the review and the use of 3225 had been judged to be appropriate, an ominous explanation. My Lords, now the question arises, are these new rules going to apply only to two-tier immigrants? And will they quash all applications under section paragraph rather 3225 and open them up or open them up with, uh, for fresh uh, consideration? If the answer is that only those who are now making applications under Tier 2 are affected, then the scandal I've announced continues. It is not remedied. If, on the other hand, it is remedied, and the use of this Section 3225 is discontinued, and indeed under subparagraph 1 should also be discontinued, but if that is discontinued, then I would say three cheers for those who've done what is often a difficult decision in politics. They've admitted the government's grave errors. Yeah. Yeah. My